Hello and welcome to this artist conversation today in the context of the exhibition Mycelia about networking as a female artist. I'm the curator Annabel Vox Rodriguez and I'm having today the pleasure to talk to the artist, artist Gundiga Evelona. We had to adjust the format of our exhibition due to the pandemic we are all currently facing. There is a physical exhibition taking place in Munich but due to the safety restrictions in place, we chose to have a digital mediation right now happening. And so to give you a bit of a context for the exhibition, the exhibition has a, a big focus on uh, networking, in particular looking on the topic of networking and success through the gender system, in this case, through the women artists lens. We're asking ourselves what does a healthy network look like, in particular in a neoliberal society that puts competition over solidarity? What does artistic success require? And we're also very curious about thinking how do we move forward after this pandemic? What measurements do we need in place that honor solidarity and transparency in order to provide sustainable methods? And without further ado, I'm going to welcome you, Pia Gondiga, and we're going to just jump into the conversation by talking a bit about the work that you provided for the exhibition and how your piece relates to the exhibition key topics of networking, artistic success, ecosystem, and detoxification. And I'm going to share my screen but that we all on the same page and talk about the things we see, at least virtually. So I'm giving you the floor. So um, should I talk about my uh, our co collaboration or about artwork about, or about what topic? What do you want to hear me from? I you? want you to talk about how your work relates to the exhibition. So what have you worked on? What do we see in the exhibition? Okay, uh, I worked together with Karin Frolich. I hope that I uh, said correctly her her surname. Beautiful. And, uh, uh, so, sorry? You do absolutely fine. Fro Frolich. Yeah, and um, our uh, work is named There's a Rise of Golden uh, Age. It's uh, uh, when we started to work uh, and networking together, we didn't. Uh, make any any discussions what we will do and we collaborate in that way that we uh, just send a pieces of art to each other and the art uh, directed itself and uh, through these uh, stages we found out uh, the narrative the story and uh, the and at the end uh, we found the uh, name of the artwork and in the third stage uh, we, uh, I wrote a story about this artwork, which already started to rise in a visual way. And we can see here that uh, these are like these little dots are like uh, cells. And my story was how uh, scientific uh, science uh, find a meteorite in the Antarctica, and it it was a uh, full of uh, humans, uh, alien human. Uh, so uh, cells like uh, woman ovums, like ovums from space, and the story is a uh, visual story of uh, our work is how the uh, scientists uh, reproduce those uh, ovums, which can uh, self-organize like alien human. Uh, human uh, ovums can self-organize if uh, hard light is lightening them in the special incubator. Like uh, how uh, feminine, feminine power can uh, uh, self-organize can, can, and can grow without a uh, presence of male. This is like the uh, part, uh, story part of me. I don't know, maybe a Karin has a different <laughs> understanding of this work but uh, this is how i see our common work because we uh, don't have didn't have any discussions we just 
send the, send the parts of our artwork to each other and the art speaks by itself without our words. And it's a very interesting contribution because, I mean, your work has a very futurist thinking, right? We are dealing with a possible future uh, where women can reproduce through the, the, their cells and they do not need a male counterpart for reproduction, mm. which is a really interesting thought scenario. And as we can see here in the exhibition shot, um, you sort of built this laboratory within the exhibition. And I find the, the topic of the laboratory really interesting because part of the exhibition question has been the ecosystem and what we need yeah. for a healthy ecosystem. So you're relating very much to the connection of the ecosystem. And it's also really interesting to see the notion of the laboratory because when we started with this exhibition, as a curator, I made it very clear that failure can be an option, even though, of course, we all wish and hope for, for a successful exhibition, whatever that means. Failure can be part of it. And when we talk about science and laboratories, the um, data they gain, they gain through success and failure. It's just data. And if we talk about success in the visual arts, it's always very interesting that the, the failure option is not a real option. Like failure means something just won't take place. And I really appreciate your thought model as a futurist uh, approach into bringing the experimentation as a valid option and also thinking about scenarios in the future and estimating how that might look like in a possible ecosystem that you as an artist change. So you're applying a thought model and try to experiment through that. And I think that's a very interesting way to apply feminist thinking as well. And I think mm -hmm. feminist thinking is very much part of your artistic practice, right? Oh, uh, yes, you can say, yeah, yeah. It's it's a one one of the ways I I, I uh, make uh, art and uh, think about art, but that, that's not the main course of my artistic uh, expression. Do you want to go a bit in further in the story, how you developed, or what sparked your interest into um, going into this thoughts of aliens and a female future or female only future did some some specific event of thinking spark that interest uh, um the basis of this story was karina's work so dots when karina sent me those dots uh i uh thought maybe a few weeks that uh i didn't know how to approach this way uh, how she works because she works very different from me and i try to see those dots from uh, different sides what can it be and uh, this uh, alien story about alien owls was uh, like a sparkling like a very crazy idea maybe this, those dots can be uh, alien owls this idea was so crazy that i catch catch it and uh, try to uh, try to um, make uh, for, for further like so um, yeah this it, it, it came to me like in, in this way and if we go a bit further into the collaboration because I mean we did have a lot of challenges and um, interesting solutions that we had to apply while we worked all together on this exhibition. So what did you learn through the mini collaboration together with Karen and what challenges did you overcome? Uh, the main challenge was at the start when uh, I didn't uh, even uh, started to work with Karen because I'm not a Skype person. I really don't like Skype and video recording. Sorry, Annabelle. That's okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And I, 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 I hope that maybe Karina will agree with me and work like through the emails or better with letters. And she said yes. And that, that was a, just a relief from, for me. And after that, I, I, there wasn't a marriage, many challenges for us. 
because we both agreed with the way we are working. And I think that maybe it was easy for Karen too, that uh, she uh, must just send the art piece to me and I will send it back and the art will make uh, uh, speak by itself. And uh, actually we will make another uh, art mail project together already when Mitzelia will end. So, uh, so uh, I think the main part of collaboration should be uh, the skill to uh, listen to the another artist and uh, 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 and um, understand that this artwork this will won't be your artwork this will be like our artwork and there should shouldn't be any place for ego or or so or uh, some some selfishness so but uh, there was no, no uh, big problems in collaboration. Maybe there was some problems with postal services and transportation and log log logistics in the end, but um, it was quite easy. Yeah, that's interesting. And I love that the notion of future is already, again, happening in the collaboration, not just in your work for this exhibition, but you're already thinking about the future and future collaboration with parents. So the notion of the future will be sort of a jumping point in this conversation. And if we go a little bit more into the personal side, what does artistic success mean to you and how do you relate to the notion of success? When I was younger, I thought that artistic success means that uh, you, will, you, uh, you make a lot of exhibitions and you get a lot of money of your art. And uh, but that that was just illusions because when I grow older as an artist, I understand that uh, if I want to be a very uh, popular and successful artist, I should be like a mainstream artist. And this this way is not for me. Uh, I think that I'm more like a marginalized art uh, art person, and the art is like a lifestyle for for me. I have many different uh, interests too, but but the art is like my uh, lifestyle, and sometimes I make uh, unpopular decisions and artworks, and um, I can't can can't say that I'm a successful artist because I don't make money from art. I have another day jobs and projects, but uh, in this, this way, like I have a free money from another works. I'm like a free person. And I, uh, I, I have no urge to make uh, something like um, in tendencies of contemporary arts, like, but I can make something like this. Maybe it's, it won't go to the big exhibition, but I can make it for me and for my friends. Actually, I make art only for me and my fr friends, not for career. Yeah. I think that's really interesting because it sounds like your definition of success is a very healthy, autonomous way, like integrity, autonomy, authenticity sound like very important values and sort of your success metrics are more related to a value system of integrity and being an authentic person, much yes. more than being successful in market terms where you have a supply of your product in, in that case the art piece and also sort of popularity and fame like for you the values are more important I think as in all these conversations we're having with the artists it's so interesting and refreshing to see the different varieties of artistic success instead of going into this very broad mainstream um, sort of network of Success means I do this and that comes out. So it's a linear road from A to B. I think it's very refreshing to see all the different layers and facets that all of your artists are providing in this exhibition. Also the, the very pragmatic and real life approaches you're filling success because at the end, success is not just a goal. It is a process. We are all adjusting towards soon. I mean, Right now, as we are going through Corona, we will yeah. all redefine how our life looks like and how success might look like during this pandemic and even after this pandemic. Yeah, for me, it's uh, it's better to be a good person who is in, in, in a 
a harmony with itself, not like to be a great artist and uh, be a mess, yeah. But I think that um, um, there is a, there is a, we can, we can not know that um, in Latvia, the artist market of the art is very, very narrow. And uh, m maybe only some artists will go abroad and make big money in the uh, art Basel and Venezia. So we we just need to find another way to be in harmony with ourselves and and uh, like this my way my opinion it's quite popular among my friends maybe just we are, all my friends are marginalized or <laughs> in some way but uh, but yeah yeah I don't want to make big money and uh, sell myself but uh, uh, there is not that much uh, curators who want to work with me in this way like like yeah. Do you feel yeah. when you say that the market in Latvia is rather rather narrow? Do you feel that there is an even in the narrow market there is an unbalance between gender? Like there are difference um, that you can share with us between women artists and male artists and um, a certain background. Yeah, definitely. In the highest level, there is like uh, some women artists and there is much more uh, men artists. And it's a paradox because uh, uh, in our Latvian uh, Art Academy of Latvia, there are uh, much more women students than male, but only few of them become uh, stars or even become uh, the, uh, teachers in, uh, in our academy. There are um, uh, male staff mainly. But uh, we are every, everybody's uh, noting this. But uh, yeah, yeah, there is a big gap between genders in Latvian art in the highest level. Yeah, where the money goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Do you, when we talk, well, success is one part of the the whole ecosystem. When we talk about solidarity in networks. What do you think that artistic success requires? So what kind of solidarity and networks? Maybe even what kind of solidarity we need while we're going through Corona? And what kind of structures do you help you personally to, uh, for your practice? About solidarity, I think that um, like in, in, other, in any other form of life, there are very uh, important to be uh, a good person. You shouldn't have a greed or jealousy for uh, your friend or another artist, because about art is it's it's just an art. You should be uh, a good friend, a good friend artist. You should be a good uh, artist teacher. There is no uh, room for ego or uh, some dis disrespect. And uh, even and it's very really important in this Corona time because uh, room for all artists uh, financing budget for all artists is very very small in Latvia, and um, I don't know how this situation will uh, grow in which way, but uh, we already have a hard times because a lot of artists uh, have lost their jobs and day jobs and commissions and. Um, I think that we should be a soldier, but um, I really don't know what will happen. Yeah. I, I, yeah, there's like, uh, like a lot of my, my friends now is not a starving, but they don't have uh, money for rent. Yeah. And uh, the artists in Latvia, they are, they don't have any insurance from government or something like this. This is a very, very weak position. Yeah. Yeah, I want to thank you for that honestly because I feel that one part of solidarity is also a very um, healthy uh, transparency with the brokenness of our system because a lot of the problems the art and cultural sector is facing right now is very systemic. It's not the fault of the people, it's a systemic condition of underpaying people, of uh, gender biases in the sector. So we have to, like things that have not been working before of Corona are right now surfacing. It's not just because of that. It's a very underlying 
systemic condition. And I think that transparency to talk about the brokenness of the system and also the precariousness of a lot of the things happening right now and that will guide us in the future is important. So thank you for the um, very honest answer because I think, I hope at least this exhibition will enable people to be very honest and to guide us into broader conversation. So to, to finish this conversation, what do you think, what qualities do you think one needs for successful collaboration? As I said, the skill to listen and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, skill to see uh, how not how not not only how artwork uh, uh, grows, but to see how other artists, as a person, feels, because uh, artists are so subtle, and sometimes they just can't talk about anything they feel. And to be a good, but at first to be a good listener, because if you see how goes uh, the way uh, of art, you can catch the feelings of your collaboration partner. And only if you if you work like this way, the art will go harmony. It will be make a piece by itself, not like this is my part and this is your part. But we uh, should do it together, make one pile together. Yeah, like uh, this is the most important part of collaboration. And there's maybe not any other aspects. Just just how to how to feel each other. Yeah. I love that. And I love the exchange we were having in this conversation. Thank you very much for that. And for you, dear listener, dear viewer, um, as part of the exhibition, we're releasing a lot of different art of conversation. One part will be in uh, English, one part will be in German. There's also a guided exhibition tour we recorded. And we are really searching for a broader conversation with you. For that purpose, we developed a little hashtag. It's called hashtag Mycelia Muck, Mycelia as the exhibition title, and MUC for Munich in order to be in exchange. Please post on social media, leave us a comment below, try to get in contact with us. We really would like to elaborate on a broader scale with notions of success, the ecosystem, gender base. It's not just a female center topic we want to have. We want to open this conversation to all genders, to all race. We want to talk about social backgrounds. It's a whole ecosystem and we're all in this together and we really would like to hear your side on the story. Thank you so much for uh, having a look at this video and make sure to see the, watch the other ones as well. Until next time.